God's greatest gift, your greatest decision. In our scripture this morning, we have a man who heard Jesus' teachings. This man was a well-educated man, well-thought-of man. He was a ruler. And as I begin to read this scripture and I begin to think about this scripture this morning, I felt like God shared with me, this man had it all together of what he knew. But he wanted something more. I'm wondering this morning, are you sitting here? You know about God. You know about Jesus. You've experienced something of him. Are you satisfied? Too many times we just become satisfied with what little knowledge we have. And we run to Jesus with every little need that we have and then we get mad at him when he doesn't answer it like we want him to. Let's look at this reading here this morning because I, thought, I found it fascinating when I felt like God shared with me that he was only at a small place in his life. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, you know you are a teacher that comes from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel, I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell from where it comes and where it goes. So was everyone who was born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus has answered and said unto him, Are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say unto you, We speak what we know and testify that we have seen and do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believed, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one who has ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is a condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen 
that they have been done in God. Notice what he is saying here. I think a lot of times as Christians, we give our lives to Christ, and that's where we stop. Nicodemus was a good teacher, I'm sure. He was a highly respected individual. Just as each one of us are. We're respected in our own right. We're expected where we're at. Some of us have been teachers. Some of us are, have no education inside out and upside down and backwards and forwards. Some of us know about God. But do we really know him? See, God gave us the greatest gift in all the world. Nobody can give you any better gift than what Jesus gave you. He gave you the ability to have salvation. He provided himself on the cross so that you could be saved. That's fantastic. And Nicodemus, Nicodemus became so hungry. Are you hungry for the things of God? Are you thirsty for the things of God? Do you want more of God? Nicodemus had gone through the motions. He had played the game of church. He had the form of godliness. But did he really know? Here comes this man, Jesus. He comes along and he teaches and he begins to minister. And he sees, he sees people who are sick being healed. He sees people who had demons being set free. He sees people that, that are lost being found. Who are discouraged, who become encouraged. And Nicodemus looks at this and says, Wow! I want some of that. <coughs> See, when we just go through the formality of religion, it begins to be stale. But when you let Jesus really come into your heart and into your life, it be, there's excitement because Jesus begins to do things and you begin to see God in a different fashion, in a different way. But too many people today are sitting there. I'm satisfied. I'm saved and that's enough. That's just the beginning part. There is much, much more. Now notice the conversation that Nicodemus and Jesus had. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Well, duh, how's that going to work? <laughs> How am I going to enter back into my mother's womb and be born again? Think about that. Impossibility. But Jesus brings out a point here. Spiritual birth comes from the Spirit. Natural birth. How many times, how many times have you heard a lady say, Oops, my water broke. Better get there. Better get to the get to the hospital. <laughs> something's something's about to take place. Spiritual birth is when the Holy Spirit really begins to work on our hearts and our lives. And there begins to be a transformation. And a birth begins to take place. <coughs> but what about you and I? Is that all there is? A lot of people say, oh, that's all I want. I just want to be born again. There is so much more, folks. There's a deeper walk with Christ. Spiritual birth is just 
the, what it is. It's the birth. It's the beginning. But the more we get into God's Word, the more you pick this Bible up, the more that you begin to read what God wants in your life. I don't want to be satisfied. And I'm not satisfied. I want more. I don't want to be, I don't want to be ankle deep in the water. Now, I'm not a very good swimmer. But I want to be in over my head. I want to be fully immersed. I want more of Jesus. But you know what? Nicodemus attended church all the time. And the picture that I get from Nicodemus here is, I want to know some more, Jesus. How is this possible? What can I do? What, what, how, what do I need to do? He, you know, if his buddies saw him go, come and, and talk to this man, they would have ridiculed him. They would have made fun of him. But it didn't matter to Nicodemus. Yes, he came by night. He came by night. But he wanted to know he was hungry, he was thirsty, he wanted to find fulfillment in what God wanted in his life. He saw something different. Church today, if we're going to be the influence in the world, the world has to see something different in your life that they want. They can't see these long drawn, oh woe is me, woe am, woe am I. Come on, brother, preach it. <laughs> this is life. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be ashamed of that. This is life. Yeah. This brings new life. Yeah. Right on. You know what? That's what we need. We need some of us crawling on our knees before the throne of grace. <laughs> and you know what God wants that in your life he doesn't want you to be satisfied where you're at spiritually today he wants you to be hungry and thirsty and he wants you to tell more than just what you've been he wants you to know where you're going too many of us are satisfied too many of us are satisfied with just where we're at spiritually. God wants more. He wants you to have more. He wants to give you more. He wants you to dig into His Word. He wants you to get involved. Most of the time, most of the time we don't put ourselves in a place to get involved with more God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What is that being born again is? What do you want in your life? What does Jesus want in your life? He wants you to have the whole package. He doesn't want you just getting a little teeny tiny morsel. He wants you to have the whole thing. He gives it to us. He gives us it all. God gave us His Son. Jesus gave us, went to the cross. He died on the cross. He hung there for you in shame and humiliation. But He hung there for your benefit. I wouldn't want to be nailed to the cross. But you know what? God is there for you. Church, we're about ready to enter into 2020. You know, we see, the, we see the characteristics of the world that is out there. We see a world who doesn't want to have anything to do with this. We see a society that is, that is turning its back upon God and His principles. We see suicide. We see people mad at each other, wanting to, to constantly kill. That comes from Satan. God wants to give you life. 
He wants you as a believer to have new life in Him. But how are you going to get it? You're going to have to be as hungry as Nicodemus was. Hey, there's got to be more. There's something more out there. Something I want to grab a hold of. Something I want to get. And it's only found as you apply yourself. Do you dig a little bit deeper? Do you put yourself in positions of learning, growing, expanding, sharing? You know, I can have a glass of water here this morning and it could be full. But if I don't partake of it, it's not going to do me any good. I can't put any more in it or it's going to spill. And that's where some of us are at. We're full to the brim of where we, where we are satisfied and content. But God wants us to flow over. He wants to flow over. He wants you, the joy of the Lord to begin to flow. And all of a sudden there begins to be happiness and joy and peace and gentleness and goodness. And when you're going through the battles, He wants my love to flow over to you. Your love to flow over to somebody else. So that that battle is not there. It might be there, but you're not going to look at it as a defeat. You're going to look at it as, I have victory. Think of little David when he went out there and met that nine foot six inch giant. The rest of the army were just cowards. Now you're going to hate me for this one. But some of us are cowards to grow any farther than we are. We'll stand back, oh, Goliath, you big dummy. But we're not willing to take the step and take that sling. And we're not willing to watch out there and walk before him and say, I defy you in the name of the, my God, Lord Jesus Christ. We'll let him come out there and taunt us all day long. But when you take the step of authority that God has given to you, God's going to give you the victory. God's going to give us the victory. Church, people, what are you going through? What's happening in your life? What giant is standing there and defeating you every day of your life? When you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed, is it doubt? Is it fear? Is it unbelief? Let's get victory over it. God gave us victory, not defeat. Oh, but Pastor, you don't understand my circumstance. No, I don't. I'm not walking in your shoes. But I've walked in shoes. I've had to overcome some battles in my life. Oh, but they're not near as bad as mine. No, they may not be. But you know what? I believe in this word. I believe what Jesus said. I believe what Jesus can do. And I know that when I ask my Father, come on, buddy, let's go get it. Let's take the victory. Let's take that step of faith. Put yourself in. Oh, pastor, I'm always defeated in my finances. Do you do what God tells you to do? Do you tithe? Do you give to God? That's one of the things he tells us. Try me! Oh, I, I can't do that. Yeah, he says... That's one, that's one area He gives us permission. Try me. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Oh, but I just can't afford to do that. <coughs> you can't afford not to do that. And I'm not, I, I never want to harp on money. I just want you to practice the principles that Jesus teaches and expect the things that Jesus tells us. Because it will happen. He will show himself faithful. 
Pastor, I'm sick. Have you done what Jesus asked you to do? What's the instruction Jesus tells us if you're sick? Who? Call on the elders of the church. Not them come and call on you. Oh, I know you're sick. I'm going to come pray. No. I mean, we're glad to do that. It says, call on the elders. All who came to Jesus. Oh, but we want them to come to us. We're glad to do that. But it's your responsibility. Again, we hate that word responsibility. Okay? In this day and age, in our society today, we don't want to take on any responsibility. We don't want to teach our children. We want somebody else to teach our children. You have a responsibility as a mother and a father. Teach your children. Train up a child in the way that he would go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Didn't say they wouldn't struggle. Didn't say they wouldn't go through some hard times. Didn't say that, that there's not going to be opportunities out there. But there's going to come a place and a time when they're going to come back and they're going to know the Lord. And they're going to serve God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. Do we believe that? It doesn't happen if you're Nicodemus. And only know what you know. I want more. Church, we need more. Wherever you're at in your spiritual walk this morning, I want more. I want to know, God. We're out here instructions. If I want to build a house, I made a declare. I made a declaration and I want you as a church to hold me to it. Okay? This year, I'm going to learn how to use a computer. And I'm going to learn... No, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. <laughs> I only have, oh, not this year. Well, that's my, that's my declaration for next year. Okay. Oh, I, I can do that if it has, I can do that. Huh? We got it on video. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to use my computer and I'm going to learn how to use my phone. And that's going to be a big deal for me. <laughs> but I can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't want to be up here every Sunday doing 25 push. No. <laughs> My church, you need knowledge. You need, you need to know what God is saying to you. God's greatest gift is His Son, Jesus. Your greatest decision is what are you going to do with it? I can want to, want to, all I want to. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that three times. But if you don't ever take the step to do it, Now, where was that hat? <laughs> I want to, I want to, but I can't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't, if you don't take out and take the steps, it's not going to happen. The Apostle Paul wrote these words. Those things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. Those things I don't want to do, those are the things I find myself doing. You know, we need to change that around. What God wants me to do, I'm going to do. You know, this church is going to grow. 
this church is going to grow. Come here ever, you know, come and we look at all these empty seats. I know there's a lot of things going on, but there's a lot of people out there that need to know Jesus, and he wants you to bring them in. He sent his disciples out to minister. And then they have them to bring them in. Come in to God's house. This is only a gathering place where we gather together and strengthen and encourage and, and laugh with one another and laugh at your pastor. It's all right with me. I got broad shoulders. There you go. <laughs> but you know what? God loves you so much. Yes, we struggle. We all struggle. But when we put our hand in Jesus' hand and we walk with Jesus, He's going to part the waters. He's going to snap the chains. He's going to help you to walk through in victory. Pastor, I don't know how to do that. There's only one way to do it. Put your hand in His hand. He says, I will lead you, I will guide you, I will direct you. He is our counselor, he's our comforter, he's our strengthener, he's our guide, he's our protection. And that's how much he loves you. Watch your decision back to him. Father, what am I going to do? Will you put yourself in a position? Nicodemus, <laughs> you know, if I, I can honestly tell you that if people would have known that Nicodemus went to Jesus, they would have laughed him out of the Pharisees. And they would have criticized him and been cruel to him and everything else. But Nicodemus wanted something more. I hope and pray that as a church, you want something more than what we have right now. I want more of Jesus. That song that we sing, I want more of Jesus more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I've been saved for a long time, but that's my desire. I want more of Jesus. I want to know Him more. I want to know Him deeper. I want to know Him richer. I want to know Him fuller. So when I, when I walk out and I walk in, in our community, that my love for Jesus shines through so that others are going to say, what do you have that I don't have? Your greatest decision is what will you do with this greatest gift that we've ever been given. Let's pray. Father, as you look into each one of our lives, that giant that comes along of doubts and fears, unbeliefs. Those things that derail us. We can't be happy because. We can't experience more of Jesus because. Oh, Father. Help us to put our hand in your hand. Help us to make ourselves available to fellowship, to share. Help us not be afraid or ashamed. Help us not to be embarrassed because we don't know what somebody else knows. But help us make a decoration. Father, with you, I'm going to know your word more. I'm going to know your love greater and deeper. I'm going to share your word with others. I'm going to fill my car with people. I'm going to make invitations. Lord, I want to present people 
before your throne. Father, I make a dedication and a commitment that, Father, I will make myself available. Oh, I know the hecticness and busyness of life. I know all the things we try to pack in and tamp into those areas of life. But Lord, I'm going to make room for you. I'm going to put you in that place where, where that idol may be right now. I'm going to take that time to study. I'm going to take that time to fellowship. I'm going to take that time to just zero in on where you want me to be. Father, I pray that this message this morning has spoken to us, that as a congregation, that we will say, God, I want more. I want to walk deeper in your love, deeper in your, in your fellowship. I want to walk deeper in a relationship with you than I've ever had before. I want to experience that new growth and that new birth and that, that excitement things. I, I know, God, I've seen, I've just seen the form of religion. I've seen the form of godliness. I know what that's all about, but I want more. Lord, I want to walk deeper with you. So when that old giant raises his ugly head, I can look at it and say, I defy you in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Be gone be broken down, chains be broken off, habits be broken because I have that experience with you and know that Abba Father you're going to break you're going to slay that giant Father, this morning, as your children are here, help us just take a moment and examine and evaluate our lives. You gave us the greatest gift that any man could ever give. You gave us a gift from heaven. How am I going to respond to it? What am I going to give back to you? My life, Father, I give unto you. As you're examining your heart and your life right here this morning, what are you telling God? Are you saying, thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life on the cross. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for convicting me and bringing me into a relationship with you. And a relationship that I want to grow and develop and mature more and more. Father, I thank you and give you honor and glory and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen.